Dr. Beck, and today I'm going to talk with you about effusion and velocity. Before you watch this, you should already be comfortable with a few things, including the kinetic molecular theory of gases, and familiar with the physics principle of the kinetic energy, and ideally with the equation that goes along with that. If you're not comfortable with those, please take a look at those videos before you finish this one. In this video, you will learn how to calculate velocity of gas particles, and we'll look at effusion and a little bit of a diffusion. Here we go. Okay, so we can visualize gas particles according to kinetic molecular theory of just balls that are bouncing around. And you will notice that some of these balls are moving a little bit quicker than other ones. So we want to be able to describe velocity, how fast these things are moving, how many meters per second these are moving at. But we have to make a decision about what we're going to decide as the velocity. Are we going to pick the fastest one and describe that? Or are we going to pick the slowest one and describe that? Or are we going to take something in between, which is a little bit more reasonable? There are several different things we could pick. So we could pick the maximum value. So we're looking at this distribution of molecular speeds. We could pick the maximum value, but uh, we're not going to. We could pick the average, which is a reasonable thing. Or we can use the root mean square, which physicists like to use because it takes into account positive and negative values and allows you to have a slightly higher maximum. So we'll call this root mean square. We'll give it a curly Q symbol here, the cursive U, the mu symbol. And it's going to be equal to some relationship to the kinetic energy. Our formula is going to be 3RT divided by the molar mass. As a reminder, kinetic energy, so one half mv squared, so a measurement of kinetic energy. And according to the kinetic molecular theory, kinetic energy is directly proportional to the temperature. So as you increase the temperature, kinetic energy goes up. So we expect temperature is going to have some effect. We need to have some effect of the size, so as we have a larger mass, that's going to affect the kinetic energy. Well, it's going to affect the velocity for the same kinetic energy. So we need to take, it, take the mass into account. I put an asterisk by this, so this is now physics. So in the world of physics, we have to use SI units. And some of the things that we use commonly in gases in chemistry, those units are not really SI units, and we can't use those when we get to the physics problems like this one. So things like ATM is not an SI unit, so we don't want to use ATMs. Mole is an SI unit, so we can stick with that one. Grams is not the SI unit for mass, it is kilograms. So when we report our molecular mass, we use molecular mass in this equation, we want to use kilograms. So not too much this, so, so it, uh, knowing the formula allows you to plug in numbers into this, and we can try a couple. So what is the velocity of uh, 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 carbon tetrachloride and helium, both gases, at room temperature, assuming that's 23 degrees Celsius. So we have a number of choices for units of R to plug into this equation. So we want to use the ones that have to do with physics or are in SI units. Looking at this list, ATMs are not part of the SI system and TOR are not part of the SI system. Calories are not part of the SI system. Leaves you with two choices here for the units of R. Best choice, joules per mole Kelvin. Same thing comes out if you have meter cubed pascals per mole Kelvin. The value is going to be 8.314. I'll let you give this a try, but if you plug in that value for R along with the temperature, which must be in Kelvin, and the molar mass, which must be in kilograms, divided by 1,000, you will end up with a velocity for a helium, root mean square for velocity of helium at room temperature of 1,360 meters per second. It is really fast, and the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. And you end up with a speed for carbon tetrachloride, which is around 220 meters per second, much slower. It's a larger molecule. And recall, these have the same kinetic energy, but have different velocities. OK. Let's remind yourself about effusion and diffusion. So if I take a little bit of gas, I put it into a chamber that spreads across the chamber. This is diffusion. So this is spreading out, so they're randomly distributed throughout this chamber. Effusion is if I open up a small hole, some of those molecules are once in a while run into that hole and escape. So being able to escape into a vacuum is our effusion. So gases will effuse as long as it's a very small hole. They're effused at a rate that has to do with how fast they're going. So we can speed these up. We can make it hotter, so it should effuse faster higher temperature, or we can put another species in there. If I put a light species in, recall, these are moving more quickly. The faster you're moving, 
the more likely you are to run into that hole and escape. Already you've seen a couple of the red gas molecules have been able to escape. And this is the basics for effusion. So all we're going to care about with effusion is coming up with roughly how quickly are these things escaping through that small hole. And it's going to just have to do with velocity alone. And recall velocity is related to kinetic energy in my gases. Okay, formally effusion is a process by which gas escapes through a small hole. Diffusion is the spread of substance throughout a chamber until it's evenly and randomly distributed. Diffusion is solely driven by velocity. And velocity is going to be functionally kinetic energy. And kinetic energy, according to the KMT, as we have higher temperatures, our kinetic energy increases. But at the same temperature, two masses, two different gases, will have the same kinetic energy. And we'll use this to take advantage and make comparisons between the two of them. So formally, we can write that the kinetic energy of one gas, say helium, is going to be equal to the kinetic energy of another gas, say xenon in this case. And by setting their kinetic energies equal to each other, we can make predictions about how differences in their masses and their velocities will be affected. And if we can figure out the difference in their velocities, then we can make predictions about what is the difference in diffusion rates. Okay. Well, let's try a couple of logic puzzles. And that's all this really is. So all this really is is just a logic puzzle. So if you can remember the connection between the kinetic energy and that relationship between velocities, then you should be able to rationalize your way through this. First question. So will a larger gas effuse at a slower or faster rate than a small gas? Let's think about velocity. What's happening in my larger gas? My larger gas is moving at a faster velocity. Here it goes. I'm sorry, my larger gas moving at a slower velocity. So here we can observe this here. My slower gases are just less likely to run into that little hole. My, large, my smaller gases are moving more quickly. They're going to effuse more quickly. So in this logic puzzle, I would want to predict that a larger gas will effuse more slowly than a smaller gas, based just solely upon the velocities. Sometimes we'll, we'll think about this in terms of ratios. And uh, we'll get a question that'll be like this, as if a gas effuses at two times the rate of another, what are their relative molecular weights? And we're assuming that these are at the same temperature, so the kinetic energies can be equal. We can set those equal to each other. And we can logic our way through that. If a gas is used at two times the rate, that must mean the velocity of one is twice the velocity of another. Looking at the kinetic energy, if a velocity is twice as much, notice we square the velocities. So the squared velocities will be four times as much. So for the kinetic energies to be the same, the masses must be one fourth as much for those values to come out the same. This can be formalized into a law. This is Graham's law that's shown in the bottom right corner here. And Graham's law describes the relationship between effusion rates and the molecular mass. This describes the same thing as thinking about the kinetic energies uh, a little bit more formal way. This is not provided to you, so my suggestion is to think about kinetic energies. And effusion is directly related to velocity, so if it's moving more quickly, it's going to get out of that hole more quickly than other ones. Okay, can you now predict the relative rate of effusion of two gases based on their molecular masses? Can you now predict the relative masses of two gases based on the relative rates of effusion? And will you be able to calculate the velocity of a gas particle? I hope you can. Thank you.